Hello, I'm Karma Kitai, and I'm your host for A Livelihood, New Adventures as We Age. Today I'm going to introduce you to Ava Berenstein. And Ava is, well, she's a jeweler now, but she has a very interesting history because years ago she was doing research in Guatemala and she has gone back to doing some things that she started 30 years ago. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Nice to be here. Thank you very much. Oh. So I know that in recent years, and you said since your son has been launched and finished college, you've decided that it's time for some new things for you in your third age, as we sometimes call it, huh? Mm -hmm. So you have been involved in making wonderful jewelry. So tell us about that a little bit. Well, the launch of Ava La Beads which is my website and uh, new career in jewelry, was kind of accidental. I always liked jewelry design and handcrafted and slightly esoteric jewelry. One of a kind pieces really spoke to me. And I started doing jewelry design almost as, as an accident because one of my pieces that I bought, which was a cherished little handcrafted piece from an art open studio, broke. And I thought, hmm, I wonder how to fix this. <laughs> and so I took a lesson to figure out how to fix it. And as soon as I took the lesson, I was hooked. Did you always think of yourself as being creative? I yeah. have that creative gene, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so love. how did it come out before jewelry? <laughs> well, in language and art and culture and dance, and I've always loved pretty much all of the arts and so um, mm -hmm. and in my background in language and linguistics I've had the language art and culture part of of my um, mm -hmm. uh, intellect sort of always uh, going mm -hmm. but um, it's something that is evolving and what I love about jewelry design is that it's a way to carry with you pieces of your life in a mm -hmm. new form and that's what is exciting about jewelry design. It's reinventing mm -hmm. things, reusing things in different ways, mm -hmm. seeing how to I use things that you might have otherwise thrown away, but use mm -hmm. them in a new way. Mm -hmm. You know, like the choker. I think I showed you the choker with the belt buckle. Uh -huh. And that was a belt buckle that is a focal point that, you know, it was a belt that no longer fit. And rather than throw it away, I saw this gorgeous black onyx triangle with this inlay mother of pearl mm -hmm. and I thought wow that's like a dramatic statement and then I had mm -hmm. the other tiles that repeated that pattern. So you've provided us with some photographs of pictures in different genre that you've been working with so yes. why don't you tell us some about that. There's another art uh, another piece from the wire with whimsy collection with copper wire and mm -hmm. Venetian glass and mm -hmm. the Venetian glass also has a story because I have friends, luckily, who travel a lot and bring me back um, artifacts from their travels. And so mm -hmm. that Venetian glass and the red Venetian glass and copper wire piece, which you have. Uh -huh. um, which is up on the screen now. Mm -hmm. That Venetian glass came directly from Italy, mm -hmm. <laughs> from a friend who lives in Brookline who travels frequently and she brings mm -hmm. me Murano glass and Venetian glass and then mm -hmm. I turn those into different kind yeah. of um, pieces and again it's it represents your travels as well as your friends travels which mm -hmm. is a nice way to reinvent uh, jewelry and yeah. and have a nice memorabilia. Yeah, so do we have other pictures of jewelry? I believe you do you have um, so I don't remember what I actually sent you you have a lariat with, um, that's with freshwater pearls, mother of pearl, lamp work bead, which was really fun. And I sort of was taking off from that building on that pattern of the lamp work bead that has all those little dots on it mm -hmm. and using that in the imagery of the um, crystals and the, um, right. the mother, the freshwater pearls, the brown in, the, in that pattern, and then the mm -hmm. mother of pearl buckle that it goes through. So that was. Um, a right. different kind of Yeah, and uh, those way. can all be found at your website, Ava Beats. Yes, they can. Yeah. 
Okay, so we need to talk about your love for the Mayan culture. Yes. And that started many years ago when you were a graduate student in linguistics and yes. spent a lot of time in Guatemala gathering the oral tradition stories from, from people. So tell us something about that. Well, as a graduate student at UCLA, I was working on the description of a language called Kekuchi, which is a Mayan language of the Kichayan Of which there range. are many languages, There right? are 29, ex but to write the grammar and the principles of the, that govern the syntax, I collected stories mm -hmm. so that I would have natural speech and discourse mm -hmm. to work from. So it's not a written language, you said, correct? No, no. and what's precious about the stories is that the oral tradition is how one preserves the language and culture and passes it down mm -hmm. from generation to generation. Now what's happening now and over the many years is that the elders, Mayan priests and others, who typically would tell these stories, mm -hmm. the elders are dying Mm -hmm. And the tradition of verbal art, this verbal art, is approaching extinction. Mm -hmm. So I've collected many stories. 18 stories are in my collection. Mm -hmm. This is one. Mm -hmm. um, and this story is called The Dance of the Deer. It mm -hmm. was told by a gentleman who was in his mid-50s. Um, his name is Francisco. Choco Och Pa'au. He's from Coban, Guatemala. Mm -hmm. And he told me the story because I asked him about the dance of the deer. It's a dance that is still performed, mm -hmm. and I wanted to understand the symbolism behind it. <laughs> the dance of the deer. It's Lach Shachokech. What is the meaning behind the dance of the deer? Here in the region of Alta Verapaz, Guatemala, the deer dance represents a particular symbol. According to our ancestors, there was a time when our native land was very dry. Each of the holy plants, the holy trees, and the bushes began to dry out. Each of the animals began to die because of the drought. All the animals, the tigers, the monkeys, the raccoons, and the deer understood how it was. They noticed that it was terribly dry and that those among them were dying. They thought that they would ask the divine Sulpaka, the one who judges in the world, that he might do us the favor, that he might grant us our water. All of the animals did it. They gathered together and elected the deer to represent their commission to San Pablo Shukanep, so that he might petition Lord Sultaka, who might grant us our drink. That's the way they did it. The deer represented the animals and they prepared themselves for their journey to San Pablo Shukanep to ask that he do their petition. When they arrived at the crossroads, the deer found themselves in danger when tigers threw themselves upon them. The deer needed to do their errand in San Pablo. They realized that they were in the tiger's claws. They thought, who should they ask to help them there in the mountains? They called the monkeys who lived nearby in the hope they might come to their rescue. The monkeys came. In their agility, they began to tease the tigers. They began to pull on the tigers' tails. They were fooling and tricking them so that there would be time for the deer to escape and go to do their petition before Tsultuqa. That is what they did. They arrived at San Pablo Shukanep in good time. They did their petition. Tsultuqa came and granted the water. He gave the animals their drink. All of them were saved there. That is the reason why the symbolic deer dance was created in our community. Okay. So we have a picture of the mask. Yes, the deer the mask the that deer is actually mask. used in the dance. It's mm -hmm. a very big, heavy, wood-carved deer mask mm -hmm. that they wear on top of their heads. Right. And there's another picture there that you'll see of the deer dancers Mm -hmm. wearing these masks and in full costume with very ornate, colorful capes. Thank you. So we're going to have to stop. Okay. And
thank you for coming. Thank you very much. I've appreciated this very much. <laughs>